Hi, Mr. Jameson. Oh, hey, man. I'm far, excuse me, how you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm alright, but I'm just really struggling in chapter one right now. I know, I know, you got a D on the last test. I really need your help. Bar, it's, it's past that. Um, I think you need the help of a math therapist. But where can I find one of those? I know just the guy. Hello, Mr. Sack. Hello, Bar. Um, my name is Dr. Vin Sack, though. My apologies. Yeah, thank you. Please make yourself comfortable. Let's see. All right, your name is Bar, and what's your last name? Chili Fries Dog. Oh, that's very nice. Um, now, when Mr. Jameson had talked to me, he said that you had really struggled on chapter one in your geometry lesson. Yes. He said you got a D on your first test? Minus. D minus? Yes, sir. Oh, my gosh, I'm in for a lot of work. Um, what, what sections in particular did you struggle with? Three, five, and seven. So three distance and midpoint formulas. Five would be angle measure. And seven would be, is it uh, three-dimensional figures? You got it. Now, I'm just going to take a wild guess here and say section seven is the most difficult one for you. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also struggled with that. I'm going to... Um, I always like to start working on the most difficult chapter, in, in your opinion. So that would be section seven, prisms. And I'm going to take yet another wild guess here and say that you're really struggling with finding the surface area and the volume of a rectangular prism. Is that correct? That's why I'm a doctor, kids. Um, okay. So why don't we do a couple... Why don't we do an example? And we'll see how that helps, okay? Alright, let's do it. And... Hello there. Hello. Hello there. So right now we're going to learn how to find the surface area of a rectangular prism and the volume of a rectangular prism. So in order to find the surface area, you have to take the length of the perimeter, the height of the rectangular prism, four, and then that's the length, yeah, and then two base of the perimeter. So that would be, or, well, that would be the area of the base. So that's like this right here. Okay, so let's do this thing. Okay. So, in order to find P, you have it right there. So, T equals 8 times H is right there, 4, 4, plus 2 times, and in order to find the base of, uh, in order to find the area of the base, my bad, you'd have to multiply 8 times 3, which equals 24. So now, simplify that, 8 times 4, 32, 2 times 24, 48. Surface area equals 32 plus 48, which is 80. All right, there's surface area. Now moving on to volume. So in order to find the volume, you have to take area of the base times the height. So as we saw, area of the base is 8 times 3, which equals 24. And the height is 4. So the volume equals 96. And that is how you find both surface area and volume of a rectangular prism. Thank you. So you really excelled on uh, section 7, and I think that is due to my beautiful example that I drew. Uh, next, let's move on to what you said was your was the most important chapter, or section in the chapter. That was 1.3, distance and point formula, and I also think that this is quite important because you can use this throughout all math. Um, so let's do an example. So, as we can see before, Robbie greatly struggled with the midpoint formula. So now, we're going to try to find the midpoint, which is the middle of this line, uh, between these two points. So, I'm going to move over here. 
The midpoint formula is x1 plus x2 divided by 2, and that is the x, and that's x, and then y1 plus y2 divided by 2. Now, let's start plugging in these points. So, let's call this x1, so mp equals negative 6 plus 1 divided by 2, and then it would be 3 plus 0 divided by 2. So, when you work that out, it turns into negative 5 divided by 2, 3 divided by 2. And this turns out to be, well, you get negative 2 halves, and you get 1 and 1 half. And that is the midpoint of line SP. Again, excelling through 1.3 distance and midpoint. <laughs> and I agree, it is very important. Now, for your free choice section, you selected 1.5, which was angle measure. Well, um, like, would you like to do an example on the board? Is that a yes? Why are you laughing when you say that? Alright, as you can see, line BC and line ED are perpendicular to each other, which means they form four right angles. Here, 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 and here. Now, as you can also see, in right angle BAD, their line FA is currently dividing it into two different angles. So, let's whip out a calculator because we're going to need that for the next part. We're going to find the measure. We're going to find what x equals. So, we're going to put 90 equals 2x plus 3x minus 2. So when you put it together, 90 equals 5x minus 2. 92 equals 5x. And then x equals 92 divided by 5, which is 18.4. Now we're going to take 18.4 and multiply it by 2 in order to find angle BAF. So we're going to take 18.4 and multiply it by 2, 36.8. And then we're going to take 18.4 and multiply it by 3 and then subtract 2 from it in order to find FAD. 18.4, multiply it by 3, and then subtract 2 from it. Now you have 53.2. And as you can see, oh, excuse me, as you can see when you add these together, it equals 90. Robbie, you excelled through my entire curriculum. I mean, I think you just, I think you're truly a math stud. Um, yeah, I, there's nothing else to do other than